Hello and welcome. This is Mr. Primus once again. We have come again this evening. What I'm going to teach you this time is very, very important. One question will help you to answer many other questions. So I'm not just going to concentrate on that on this, on any question I give you. I will explain it and give you ideas on how to answer other ones related to this. So please pay attention. See our first question. And please watch this video to the end and other ones. Thank you very much. Copper metal dissolves in concentrated trinitrate 5 acid with the resultant evolution of A. Carbon dioxide, B. Sulfur oxide, C. Nitrogen oxide, and D. Carbon 2 oxide. So, my first review, you ask why is this one carbon 2 and this one carbon 4? I've taught students that in all of our videos, go and check oxidation states of compounds. Thank you very much. So, let's look at the answer to this question. First of all, copper you know is uh, less electropositive than hydrogen therefore it is below hydrogen in the electrochemical series so look at it if you know hydrogen copper like this in the electrochemical series which means copper cannot displace hydrogen listen why am i talking about this generally metals when they react with acid we produce the corresponding salt and hydrogen, hydrogen gas. Can you see it now? So metals, this is general properties of metals. When they react with dilute acids, we produce salt and liberate hydrogen. But copper is less electropositive. It is weaker than hydrogen. Therefore, it cannot displace hydrogen when it reacts with any acid. Now look at what is going to happen here. Normally, what we are now going to have is less balanced equation between copper and Trying to with 5 acid. Look at it. Copper plus HNO3. This will give us a product. Copper will go with trying to 5 acid. Cu NO3. But here, yeah, look at it as I told students. Copper is 2. NO3, the, the, the charge is 1. So we put this in bracket like this and write 2. This is copper 2 trying to with 5. This is a salt. I've taught our students acids, bases, and salts. Check one of our previous videos. You will see it. So when it reacts with this, it will produce this. Now watch, watch. So the nitrate 5 acid is an oxidizing agent. Concentrated nitrate 5 acid will not give you hydrogen gas. Instead, what it does is that it will oxidize hydrogen to water. Unlike other acids like hydrochloric acid, or tetra surfaces acid. These ones, when they react with metals, will definitely give you hydrogen gas. But this one at five acid will oxidize hydrogen to form water. That is one thing about just one at five acid. Alright, so we are going to have sort of hydrogen gas. We are going to have water normally. Then again, what we are going to have here, copper and this. Look at this nitrogen here. So this will also give us another product. Nitrogen 4 oxide. These are the products obtained when copper reacts with trinitrate acid. They can ask you which of the following reactions can uh, produce nitrogen 4 oxide. Take the answer. When copper reacts with this, it will give us what? Nitrogen 4 oxide. We can balance this equation. Alright. Nitrogen is... is uh, how many is it here? Oxygen is 3. So let's say, let's put 4 here. 4 hydrogen. Then we put 4, 2 here. 4 hydrogen here. How many oxygens? 3 times 4, 12. 3 times 2, 6. Plus this one. Will give us what? 8. If we put here, here 2 here. Let's see it. Three ta 2 times 3, 6. Plus 4, 10. Plus this one, 14. Okay, sorry. We we'll come again. 3 times 2 is 6. Plus 2 is 8. Plus 4, 12. So, oxygen is balanced here. Oxygen is balanced here. So, if we look at it, it's like the equation is balanced. 4 nitrogen. How many nitrogen do we have here? 2 here. Plus 2, 4. The equation is balanced now. So, these are the products. Which means, what is the answer? See the answer. See the answer. So, by balancing the equation, you have been able to get... The product to be obtained. Thank you very much. Let's look at another question now. Okay, we have another question now. Look at this. 
The oxidation state of chromium in potassium hepta-oxo dichromate 6. Potassium 7 hepta hepta oxo dichromate is what? I even mentioned the answer. Is the answer is 6. Now look at how did we get 6? How, how come 6? Watch. This is the result of this. This is the radical. This is the radical that produces this. When potassium reacts with this uh, 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 hepta oxo dichromate 6, it will give you this. Look at it. Potassium is 1. Chromium 2072. These two, they will transfer the electrons. These two comes here to become like this. k 2 cr 2 7 This is a compound. Now we are going to work on this. How did we get this 6? That is still the question. How did we get this 6? Now we are going to work on this very one. Now look at it. This is a radical. Eh? The algebraic sum of the charges of a radical equals uh, the charge of the radical. The algebraic sum of the charges of elements that make up the, the, the radical is equal to the charge of this radical. What does that mean? I've taught this in one of the videos I have where we have in this uh, in this channel. Look at this. This minus two is for both oxygen and chromium. Now let's find this oxidation state of chromium because this is what you are talking about. Not this and not this. So it's, it's from this. Now look at what we have here. So we have chromium which is two. We are going to call it X. Oxygen is normally two. So 2 times x, 2x, 7 times minus 2, 7 times, oxygen is minus 2, always minus 2, the charge of oxygen is minus 2, so 7 times minus 2, we have O, 7 times minus 2, is equal to this charge, minus 2, so let's bring these charges down, we are looking for the charge of chromium, that's why I have to give it x, it's unknown, so we have 2x, 7 times minus 2 is minus 2, 14 is equal to minus 2. Now collect like terms. So 2x equal to minus 2 plus 14. 2x equal to minus 2 plus 14 is 12. Divide both sides by 2. This 12 divided by 2 is what? 6. So chromium is 6. Chromium is 6. That's it. But let me do something. Let, let's quickly do something that is very nice. In other ways, they are going to repeat this question in another form. Maybe you will be asked to find the, the change in oxidation state of chromium from this to that. Look at this. You may be given something like this. Cr2, O7, 2 minus. And, and you, have, you have equation like this. Cr3 plus. This is like in oxidation state. So you are going to have other things. And put other elements here. I'm going to, okay, I will do it right now. For those of you that have not been my student at Primo's Day Tutorial, Lagos. So I'm going to still do this eh, and make you have it. We just started the tutorial on this anyway. So many of them are enjoying it. They have all subscribed to my channel. And I wish every one of you subscribes so that you enjoy the good things we are doing here. Please, if you have not subscribed, do it now because we are going to have more in the days to come. Now look at this. Let me take time a bit to break this down in case you are giving something like this in the examination. Watch. Look at this is chromate 6 to chromate uh, 3. Now, let me just do simple uh, balancing of redox equation. When you have something like this, let me clean this. Look at what you are going to do. Balancing. This is an oxidizing agent. So it will undergo reduction. Oxidizing agents oxidize other substances. When they oxidize other substances as agents, they become reduced. I'm going to teach oxidation and reduction reaction once again here. So, but let's concentrate on this. Look at what we are going to do now. So, we have chromium here. Mind you, we are going to have chromium 3 ion here. So, we are going to say there is... Okay, we are going to add hydrogen ion first. If you add hydrogen ion, then here you have hydrogen and oxygen. We are going to have something like water here. Water here. Now... You watch, this is, have you, have you seen what I did? First of all, add hydrogen, then add water at this side. Then look at, seven oxygen, seven oxygen. The best thing we have to do is to put seven here, seven oxygen. So seven oxygen. Hydrogen is now 14. We'll come and write it here, 14. Put it like this now. 
So you have you have an equation, but it is not yet complete because you have not balanced the charges. We have an equation now, but it's not complete. In one of the questions, they gave them they gave them something like this, and in place of this hydrogen, students we are given y. Students we are asked what is the value of y in this. So it only, it only takes balancing of the equation. So we have found out that the answer to this question is what? 14. Remember, from this, we are entering to another thing. That's what I promised, and I'm doing it, and we're going to do more. Look at this now. So you look at this. Let's check the total number. No, look at this equation. It's not yet balanced because we have two chromium. Two chromium here. Therefore, I have to two put two here so that it balances completely. Now, let's look at the charges. The number of atoms are balanced. 2 chromium, 7 oxygen, 14 hydrogen. 2 chromium, 7 oxygen, 14 hydrogen. But the charges are not balanced. How, what does that mean? You have 2, two chromium here. 2 minus 2. You have 14 ions plus 14 positive ions plus 14. Now, here, you have 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is just 6. So, minus 2 plus 14 is 12. Plus 12. But here, you have plus 6. So, it's a problem. The only thing we have to do is to reduce this 12. We are going to re reduce this 12 by adding electrons. Electrons are negatively charged. So, the best thing you have to do is to add 6 electrons. So, 12 and the electrons are negatively charged. 12 minus 6 will now give you what? Plus 6. Electrons are negatively charged. So, what we are going to do is to add plus 6 in here. This equation is balanced. It's balanced like this. So, anything you are given, whether this one is called Y or this one is called Y, any one you are given, you can get it. Thank you very much. Let's look at other questions that will also help us. Alright, let's look at this question now. This is about the structure of atom. Okay. So, the atom says the maximum number of electrons in the L shell of an atom is you know we have the shells these are the shells of an atom we have the K shell the L shell the M shell the N shell the O shell but let's look at these ones so shell K is given shell number one L shell number two M shell number three N four O five P and other ones so now look at this we have the formula for finding number of electrons in a shell is 2n square, where n represents the shell numbers. This n represents, for k, n is 1, l, n is 2, m, n is 3, m, n is 4, o, n is 5. So we are going to use this formula to solve this. So 2, which one are we looking for? It says what? L. So this is 2. 2 raised to power 2. 2 raised to power 2 is what? 4. And 2 times 4 is what? 8. So you see our answer here. Very simple. So anytime you're asked to find number of electrons in a shell, don't forget to use this formula. I hope you can get that. And remember, an atom is electrically, this is an additional information, neutral. Why is an atom electrically neutral? Why? Because number of proton is equal to what number of electron number of proton proton is positively charged electron is negatively charged so in in a in an atom of uh, sodium now sodium has atomic number 11 so it has 11 protons and 11 electrons 11 minus 11 zero neutral so an atom is electrically neutral and again, additional information for your success. I want you to score high at chemistry this coming exam. And God is going to do it for you. You are going to celebrate. You can make comments. You will come back in our, in, my, in our comment session and make comments that, wow, Mr. Primo has really helped us. And I assure you that. Believe that. You are going to come and make comments in our comment session after your exams next in April. All right. So take this now. So now, so the proton, the proton is found in the nucleus. The proton and the neutron, these two, proton and neutron, are found in the nucleus of an atom. Why? The electrons revolve round. Because the electrons are light, they are not heavy. That's why mass of proton, mass of proton, mass of proton is one, mass of neutron 
is one. Mass of election, mass of election, mass of election is one over 1,840, something like this. In this within this range, 1,000, one over 1,840 something. So electron is very, very light, 0 0.0000. That's why it revolves around the nucleus in the shells and orbitals. All right, so this is it. And we are going to look at another question now. Let's look at another question. Look at another question now. Look at this question now. It says, elements in the same period, in the same period, in the periodic table. I'm going to teach WASI students, those that are going to write WASI, WAYEK. The periodic table, the full one, I will draw everything, explain it very well, connecting the elements, the properties of each of the elements in the periodic table, the groups, and, 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 to the place like the groups and their properties, the group trends and other things. So please, do well to subscribe uh, to this channel if you have not subscribed. Alright, and keep checking our new videos every day, every day. Alright, thank you very much. Let's look at this. So the number says elements in the same period in the same period in the periodic table have the same same period in the same period. So what do they have? Is it not same number of shells or same atomic number or same chemical properties or same physical properties? Wow. Listen in a very short form. At any time you are talking of period, same period. Look at it. This represents group this this represents group and like this is period elements in the same group this is this is period here this is period here and this is group here so group runs down like this period goes like this period goes like this elements very simple in a very short form elements in the same group have what same same number of electrons in the outermost shell for same group same number of electrons in the outermost shell same group that means if you have an element like sodium which is 281 potassium is 2881 see it 1 1 these two are in the same group that's why they are having 1 1 but they are in different periods. This one is period 1, 2, 3. Period 3. This one 1, 2, 3, 4. Period 4. Period 4. Period 4. So what determines the group? What determines the group in the periodic table is the valence electron. The valence electron. So if they have the same number, it means that they have the same group. But what determines the period? What determines the period is what? The number. The number of shells. So one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Another another member of this will be will be two eight two magnesium. Two eight one. Two eight two aluminium. Two eight three. See two eight one. Two eight two. Two eight three. So these ones are the same. What period? Period. So elements in the same period have the same number of one, two, three shells, one, two, three shells, one, two, three shells. But they do not have the same atomic number. This one has atomic number 11. This one has 12. This one has 13. See? Chemical properties. No. From here, these ones are alkali metals. These ones are alkali earth metals. And with the same period, at a time, they turn to non-metals. So they don't have the same uh, chemical properties. Neither do they have the same physical properties. From metals to non-metals. So the answer here is number of shells. This is the answer. So we are going to do more. God bless you. Keep following us.